Inspire Omotosho from Inspire Into Action. Today we are talking to Dr. Dana Truesdale. How are you doing, Dr. Truesdale? I am doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you for making the time to talk to our listeners about who you are. Could you tell them more um, about your business and yourself, please? Well, I'm Dr. Dana Truesdale. I'm the owner of Innovation Dental Center in Baltimore City. It is located in the Bolton Hill area, and I am a family practice, also cosmetic dentist. I do a little bit of everything, a little bit of ortho, that straightening of teeth, a little bit of bird dentures, root canals, extractions, et cetera, et cetera. I'm into just the whole person, keeping the whole person healthy. Yes. And also, um, Dr. Truesdale is known for helping people who have anxiety when they have to come to the dentist. Could you tell us a little bit about that? I take such pride in my patients who are afraid of the dentist. I have patients who have been um, away from the dental office for 10, 15, 20 years. And those are my special patients. Those are the patients um, I'm the most excited about because I have the opportunity to help you overcome a certain fear right. of the dentist. And I build you up. I don't beat you down for not coming or for just having um, a real fear of the dentist. By the time my patients leave, they're very comfortable. Um, I don't do any type of sedation or anything like that, but I coach people through it. And instead of treating the the um, the symptoms of anxiety, we actually deal with anxiety. Yes, and we good. actually um, give people hope. Yes, and that's the thing that that wins people over. I, I really enjoy what I do. Yeah, that's really that's really important. That's probably one of the reasons why you were voted the top three dentists in Baltimore, wouldn't you say so? <laughs> yeah, that's a big part of it. Yeah, because that is a serious problem for people, and people don't understand how important it is to take care of your teeth. Why why is it so important that we take care of our teeth? Because it's not just your teeth that you're taking care of. This is um what you see in the mouth is a reflection of what's going on in the body. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times your dentist can diagnose things that you don't even know is happening. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you on several occasions, at least three occasions, I've been able to identify persons who have who had cancer, mm -hmm. different things going on with their thyroids, hypertension, diabetes, mm -hmm. all these things. It's like a window into what's happening on the inside of oh. the body. Right. Um, the mouth, the teeth, um, is a self-esteem booster or self-esteem killer. Yeah. So a lot of people, this will cause them to have complexes. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I re restore people. Yes. Re -restore, I, I point you in the direction you're supposed to be going into. And I really take inventory of what you tell me, yeah. of things you tell me. So I'm like an investigative mm -hmm. dentist as well. Yeah. That's really great. Dr. Truesdale, how long have you been a dentist and what made you want to become a dentist? I have been a dentist for 13 years now. Mm -hmm. Graduated in 2004 from Meharry Medical College in Nashville, Tennessee. And it's funny you ask that question, um, what made me want to be a dentist? There were several reasons. Um, one reason it is, um, my dentist and I had a really good relationship growing up mm -hmm. and I thought that what he did was so easy I said man you make all this money and this is it this is all you do yeah and he kind of smiled he didn't really respond and I said oh, I'm definitely going to be a dentist too <laughs> so I was 12 years old when I decided I was going to be a dentist mm. and he said okay if you ever decide that you want to be a dentist for real I'll support you mm, I'll great. support you all the way I'll encourage you. Um, you can definitely be a dentist. So that was a big part of it. Yeah. What made you want to open up your own practice? I mean, it's different from becoming a dentist and you can work with someone or a group, but you decided to open up your own practice. What was the reasoning for that? Um, I think it was because I wasn't satisfied working for somebody else. Mm -hmm. I felt like um, I was limited. I was restricted. Mm -hmm. 
and I felt like I couldn't reach my full potential. Mm. Um, I don't have an issue with submission, right? But I just, I am one of those free spirited people mm-hmm. who just want to do a little bit of everything, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, um, I didn't want to be limited. Yeah. And and I think that's the bottom line, sir. I was, I'm a leader. Yeah. And I needed a leadership position. Yeah. So I just created one and, you know, I play by my own rules and I just, I love what I do. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you got to know your role. You got to know your position. You have to know which lane that is good for you. Um, it's not always good for someone to open up their own practice, but for some people, like that's, that's your, that's your goal. That's what God placed you here to open up your own practice and to be able to teach people and assist people in how to open up their own practice or to assist them to work for you because maybe they're not ready to do that. You know, you know, the other thing is when I envisioned myself being a dentist Mm -hmm. years ago, God gave me the vision. Mm -hmm. I never saw myself as an employee, Mm -hmm. but rather an employer. Mm -hmm. So I never envisioned myself being anything less than the person on top. Yeah, that's Yeah, I understand. I understand that some people are not, they don't see that and they never envision that they're already, and they have that entrepreneurial mindset already. And I believe that definitely that's something that God placed in you. So in regards to opening your own practice, you know, sometimes people may think it might be easy, you know, like you thought it was easy to become a dentist because you didn't see all the back end work that your dentist put in there into, mm-hmm. into creating his own practice and, and becoming a dentist. So what is what are some of the things that um, that you could share with some of the listeners about creating your own practice and how that process was for you? My advice would be to read everything you can read on um, leadership mm-hmm. and um, business. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm still learning mm-hmm. as I go because I really didn't take any business management courses or anything. My advice is never stop learning. Yeah. Never stop seeking um, information. Mm-hmm. And it can come from different other entrepreneurs, other people that have um, laid the path before you. I got with other dentists. I spoke with other dentists on different occasions, but ultimately it came from um, being open to receive information. Yeah. If you come across as open, mm-hmm. people will pour into you. Yeah. And so from different um, fields, different career paths, other people are just pouring into me. They're Hey, I want you to meet this person. And yeah. actually had a meeting today with someone. Um, I just got a wealth of information. Wow. Um, I, it's just my entire life I've been open to learn. Right. And yeah. as long as you're teachable, someone will teach you. Yeah, that's so true. And it's important to be teachable. I mean, no one has arrived, even if you become a subject matter expert in your field, you still need to learn. You still need to be open. There's someone that has um, some experience that you may not have achieved yet because just of life and you haven't came upon that. So it's always good to have a, a, a group of people or a group or entity where you can go to to find out these answers and, and be open for to take the meat and spit out the bones, you know, so to speak. Because everything that someone says, you don't always do. You take what you can learn from that and you go with that. And you don't always go with everything that someone gives to you. But I'm sure you try to take the value out of what people are saying. And not only that, but sometimes what you get, it may not be the season for it. That's true. But later on, that same word, it will be in that season. Right. You go back to that word. So... You know, I kind of um, sometimes draw back on old conversations that didn't really mean anything yeah. at that time. Yeah. And then Holy Spirit will bring it back to your remembrance. Like, yes. oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, so I love you that. Take, you take from it what you need for that time. Yeah. Yeah, that's so true. Because um, as a being an entrepreneur, you have to have some skills. So what are some skills that you can, that you think are important for entrepreneurs to have? Um, skill set, discernment, spirit mm. of discernment. Um, you got to be able to hear um, and, and focus, just being focused. Um, 
got to take care of your body, your mind. Yeah. You have to um, be able to hear what your staff is saying to you. Mm-hmm. You have to read like you must, because anybody can, can do this. Yeah. You just have to be disciplined. Yeah, yeah. You have to commit. You have to be committed to it um, yeah. because you'll either love it or hate it. There's no in-between. Yeah. Um, you just have to always stay prepared. Mm-hmm. So at no given point in time, do you want to get caught uh, unprepared? Yeah. Because it can it can mean somebody's life. Yeah. It can mean somebody's career. You know. So it, the the cost is too great when you're not prepared. That's so true. And when I say prepared, meaning stay prayed up about it. Yeah. Stay. Um, informed of current events mm-hmm. that are happening um for me medicines are always changing mm-hmm. um there are different side effects so it's, it's good to know your audience it's good to know something about what the people have if right. you have never heard of a disease or anything like that take the time right then and there to look it up yeah back to somebody so I, I just think that um to be prepared um get books, audio books, talk to people in the same um, profession. A lot of people don't talk to other people because they don't want people to steal their ideas. Or Or they don't want people to think that they don't know. (laughs) You know, perceive that you don't know if you're asking a question. People may think that you don't know what you you should know. (laughs) But it's okay to get back with them. You know what? Mm -hmm. Uh, My mind's not on it right now. Let me look this up. Yeah. I'll get back to you. Yeah. And I promise I'll get back to you and give them a time yeah. where you're going to get back to them. So that way they're expecting it and you're prepared. You don't put it on the back burner because you've given your word. Right, right. And that's the thing. That's another thing. If you if you say you're going to do something, you should do it. Yeah. Follow through. Yes, that, those are all good, all good words of wisdom, I, especially the one about, you know, getting back to people. Don't be afraid to say, you know, can I get back to you on that? And a lot of people sometimes feel like they always have to give an answer, always have to respond to the questions that people are asking. You can say, let me get back to you on that. And and that, that and then you can be more prepared and more qualified to answer a question once you got, got did some research and found out the answer and just not just talk about something that you may not have any information about that's really that's really key and you can even make it sound professional by saying things like let me prepare an answer for you and i'm gonna lay it out and you just do it fancy it up you know right exactly improvise (laughs) um but let me do a little bit of research because i don't want to tell you the wrong thing right you know so you just like you said doctor and yeah, exactly, exactly. So in regards to action steps, and your 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 points or your skills were really great. So in regards to action steps and taking action and starting a business, um, what are some things that you can say, like maybe three things that you could say that people need to take action on when they're starting or thinking about starting a business? Maybe they're thinking about opening their own practice. Maybe they are a, a doctor or a nurse practitioner and they want to open up their own practice. What are some action steps that they can do right tomorrow um, that would help them to start their own business? Start looking. Mm. Start looking. Um, that's the biggest thing. Start looking for a practice mm. because once you get that practice, you'll automatically go into survival mode because you have to survive. Yeah. Um, so that's what it was for me. Mm-hmm. I put a date on, as a matter of fact, it was 2013. Mm-hmm. And I said, by my birthday, mm-hmm. which is September 5th, for all of you who want to send yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I dressed too. <laughs> on September 5th, I will have my own practice. It was June. Mm. So I did a 90 day challenge Mm. and um, I remember on like the 89th day or something like that, I had signed a contract. Oh, wow. Practice. So you have to set a goal. Yes. um, But you must start looking. Once you start looking, then you'll start feeling, you'll you'll get more into it. Right. Your heart will follow. Your mind will follow. And you'll start attracting what you want. 
So if you think about something long enough, you definitely start attracting. Yes, sure. Um, so you have to get in the, you know how racers track when you're mm-hmm. running track? Mm-hmm. How it's like get ready, get set. Right. Get in that get set position. That get set. That's and good. then you'll find, once you find what you're looking for, you'll start running. Right. And everything will fall into place, but you have to do something. Yeah. And starting a practice, just start looking. Start looking at the classified ads. Just start looking at the dental website. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll find practices for sale. Yeah. Just want to start from scratch. Just get with a broker. Yeah. And tell them what you want to do. That's that's great. Because if you don't, if you don't put it in focus, it's not going to happen. You can talk about it all you want to, but if you don't put some focus on it, it's not going to happen. It's going to be one of those things that you just keep talking about, and you're not going to just do it. So that that's really key. That's great. That's great. That's a great action step to start looking, start attracting those things that you want to, that you want to come into your life, especially when you're ready and you're set and you're focused and you've done the research and you looked at, you know, what it takes and you're ready and prepared, like start looking. You, and she didn't say like, you gotta, you gotta go and do this and do this. And she said, just start, just start looking, just start being, getting the mindset of, of looking, getting the mindset of, trying to position yourself to step out there and start your own practice. That's awesome. That's great. That's great information. That's great. So um, Dr. Truesdale, if the viewers want to get in touch with you in regards to um, social media, where are you located? How can they get in contact with you? Okay. Um, My website is um, Mm -hmm. www.idcbaltimore.com. I am on Facebook as Innovation Dental. Uh, and my phone number is 410-383-7070. Yep, that's great. Thank you for taking the time out to talk to us. And um, I know that from this interview, a lot of people got a lot of good skills, a lot of action plans. So I just really appreciate you sharing what was on your mind to um, the listeners. Thank you for having me.